Thank you for attending this presentation. I'm Vicente Goyanes. I'm the CEO of Teltec Video Research. We have been uh, around the Matterhorn project from the beginning, but uh, just for newcomers, we are a company uh, born uh, at the University of Vigo in the northwest of Spain, and uh, well, we are focused on open video solutions for, for education. And going uh, straight to the point, um, this is, uh, or this try to explain the typical or the common um, Matterhorn architecture. What we now are, uh, start to call, call uh, we're calling the light uh, CA architecture. In, in this um, setup, the uh, capture agents are just recording whatever happens at the lecture hall, and they are delivering a media package that's only, uh, with only uh, the recordings inside. Then the, the core applying the workflow um, somehow populates the media package, uh, structuring the slides, uh, detecting the, 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 the slide changes, uh, transcoding the media, and so on. And then with that rich media package, you are able to uh, provide the, the user experience um, to, to your students. As, the, as, as, as this uh, architecture scales up, um, as you uh, start adding more and more light capture agents to, to your infrastructure, you will have to also increase the number of workers uh, in your data center, in your, co in your, um, in your core, because uh, more and more heavy processing is need to be done uh, in order to have the uh, enriched media packages, packages ready uh, for publishing. But what if, um, wouldn't it be nice to have a capture agent able to uh, deliver an almost ready to publish uh, media package? Um, well, we start working on, on, on that idea. We call that DreamEd uh, capture agent uh, and a smart capture agent. And thinking on, on how an infrastructure like this can, uh, can, can, can work and can scale up, uh, well, um, having a, a capture agent able to deliver an al almost ready to publish media package to the core, uh, adding more capture agents, you're going to be adding more processing power to your infrastructure. So the core will be almost, um, well, you will almost not need to spend more money and, and, more, and, and to add more um, uh, servers uh, to that core. So why this uh, new approach? Why this uh, smart capture agent architecture? Of course, because scalability, as I said. But also, we realized that um, it, it will be also easier to build a Matterhorn deployment uh, if you have a, a, a capture agent able to deploy uh, an almost ready uh, media package. The core will be simpler. It will be also more stable because um, uh, as, as the core is, is simpler, you can um, redund uh, some parts of the core. And it, it will be very difficult to have a, a catastrophic failure in, in, in your uh, infrastructure. Also, you will have, as I said, lower cost of uh, acquisition. Because if those uh, kind of dream capture agents uh, were, can, were, um, had the same price than a regular capture agent, uh, you will have to spend less hours configuring and, and maintaining the core and, and, of course, buying servers. But also you will have, you will have less um, operational costs because uh, even from an electrical power point of view, uh, you will have not to cool the environment of the capture agent um, as you have to do if you uh, spend that electrical power processing uh, files in a data center with a cooling system. But um, if you perform um, video processing at cap agent level, you have direct access to the raw video before any compression have been done to it. And you can uh, streamline all the, all, all the processing um, needed. And of course, if your infrastructure is, is uh, 
uh, if it's, it's virtual, it's, it's in an, an external uh, cloud provider like Amazon, you can end uh, with uh, huge uh, savings uh, with this uh, approach. So we start trying to build that uh, kind of dream capture agent, that smart capture agent. We started with our Gallicaster software and uh, using um, high-end multipurpose hardware, basically uh, i7 mm, processors and, and boards. And the, wall, the goal was to build a capture agent uh, able to record, of course, a dual stream, uh, in a dual stream environment, but also able to mm, perform in, in real time all uh, the common workflows or all the common workflow operations like, um, of course, encoding, but also a slide detection, a slide change detection, um, a slide uh, capturing, um, OCR, trying to be able to perform all of those processings in real time. So just um, when the lecture ends, the capture agent should be able to deliver uh, an almost ready to publish uh, media package to the core. And well, we name it that project Calicaster Pro. We think that almost we achieve that, uh, that goal and, and even um, uh, some additional features. But uh, let me present you and introduce you and, and hand uh, over to my um, friend, colleague, and our CTO, Bruno, who will present you um, the Calicaster Pro features. OK. Can you lend me the microphone? Oh, sure. Great. Now, uh, our pre presentations are going to collide because he already introduced some of the points we uh, will be talking about, but let's go through it again. OK. So we, wor we work on lots of exciting new functionalities. Uh, but we, we focused in three major set of features. So we made us a uh, question. As a open cast adopter, how, how this is this going to help me? We made ourselves this question and this asks, OK, are there any more tasks that we could be doing uh, while capturing? How can we help the manner of home core to be more efficient? Can we keep the simplicity of Gallicaster that everyone, everyone loves while doing it? OK, so with, we said, yes, we can do it. So the first, tag, the first task we work on was encoding. So right now, our capture agent is doing real-time encode of faith HD streams at the same time. We are doing presenter and presentation in master quality. That's something you don't get in a regular workflow. That's a very high quality uh, um, capture uh, that we're using uh, for, for Keep. So it w we had to go back to a very, a very, a very um, um, high quality source. We have it. A pres presenter and presentation delivery quality and a custom blend composition. This is being done in real time. So we're capturing everything. We have those five flows there. You may change that. You don't need the master quality. You can produce whatever you need. So you may have already your multi-quality um, streams that you, may be, you could be processing in Marathon later on. But you're going to do it uh, fir first hand here in the capturation. Then we have a look. What do you do in a regular, regular workflow? You do fast uh, trimming. One of the operations you got to wait for is to trim the, pa the media package. Okay. Right now, you can do it in the capturation itself before ingest takes place. Or you can do it using the Marathon admin UI. In our media package, in the one we're working on right now, Tracks can be trimmed with one second accuracy without re-encoding. So this means you go to the, to the editor, video editor, and you select this point and this point, you cut it, and it's done without re-encoding at all. So you, if you have this operation on the cloud, on your core, it's going to be really fast to do it. So another thing you do is looking for a slide change detections so you get a capture of the slide. We are also doing that in real time here. And we are getting high quality slides from raw video. So that, that is going to give you better OCR results. It's, it really makes a difference. Sorry. This little snitch is failing on me. OK. OK. 
So it produces high quality slides from raw video. So it gives us uh, an option to get better OCR. And besides, our, uh, with the algorithm we implemented on, in OpenCV, we can detect uh, false positives with embedded uh, when there is embedded video in, in presentations. So we just get one slide when the, the video begins and one, one when it ends. Of course, we're, we're doing OCR as well. Uh, uh, so a job is created for each detected slide. It's queued uh, to a worker in real time that perf performs the OCR and results are persisted locally and included as an MPEG-7 catalog in the media package before the ingest process. So what we have in the end is an OpenCast Matterhorn compliant media package with all the required assets in there. It's ready to be ingested with just, what's just land, last operation pending, publish. Now, that's uh, what we can do uh, to get uh, a simpler core, but we thought, why stop here, and why, why uh, we don't work on something else? So we, we started working as well in some features we want to see in a capture agent. Some of them were suggested by the guys of Manchester. In this case, this one is something they, they were very keen to have. And this is having an intelligent, what we call intelligent PIP. So this, what this thing does is locates test-free space in, in slides in real time. So it com and with that information, it composes a PIP version of presenter and presentation. It adapts, adapts its size as free space varies and goes full screen when a slide doesn't change in a while. It's called a decay time. So when the teacher stops presenting and moves on and is wandering around the class, uh, they, you get the teacher full screen. And when he resumes moving uh, the presentation, it goes back to working as it should. Uh, scaling up and showing the, just the, the, the presenter in a, in a corner. We also have QR code detection. You can embed it on the presentation or show it to the camera. It doesn't ma make uh, a lot of sense to have it on the camera, but it works somehow. And it can be used for live editing. So we, have, uh, we can add recording metadata using the QR code. Uh, we can signal the beginning and the end of the recording, so you, you use auto streaming some, some, something in the source the way they are doing it, uh, the guys from Manchester. You can hide or show any of the video signals, and you can also mute out audio. And there are so other features we're using with the QR code detection, but th th those are coming on the following set of features. So, so something else we were missing was uh, uh, being able to stream from Galicaster Live. So we wanted somehow to support all sorts of protocols. So right now we can stream to RTMP dash HLS out of the box. You can push any of the streams, all of them, to any CDN at any time. You can do five push five pushes of the individual streams to any CDN. You can push one stream to five different CDNs at the same time. You are you are only bound by your network capacity. There is no problem there. You can push uh, as well uh, those uh, high quality streams, I mean the ones that we call master, to any room, and you can use that as a way to show your video in over overflow rooms. Uh, besides, uh, if you are streaming somehow uh, this video uh, to, attending pe to people who attend remotely, uh, given you have the feature of the QR code, you can stream a blackout version uh, to avoid copyright issues, for instance, you don't know who's going to be attending remotely. Uh, the video is going to be shown in black if you show the QR code, and that it's uh, we think it's pretty nifty. So you can stream a customized, a customized blended version. It can be a PIP, a 50/50 layout, or custom, and you can even change change that dynamically in real time. You have a web UI where you have a layout, a canvas. You can move it around. You can apply the changes, and it changes in real time. The stream, I mean. And now uh, we have a, key, uh, a small video here. We recorded showing uh, this here is the Calicaster control, control panel, uh, Calicaster Pro control, control panel. Um, this is the tab that controls live streaming. And what we see here is the local stream that Calicaster is doing. It, if we flip that, we should be watching the uh, stream that's been published away, I don't know, in the cloud. 
This is the canvas where you can change your layout for this here. And this is the camera preview and the screen preview for the deli delivery quality. Okay, and now we're gonna see it working in live. I guess there is an audio. Here. And that showcase the concept of the We are recording five streams at once. Present our presentation in master quality. Present our presentation in delivery quality and a composition. That in this case, as well as. May have a look there. PIP. That's the PIP. It allows you to see, to, to produce that and uh, send it to a mobile device, for instance. It looks for the free space over there. It's adapting the space in real time. Now we have a QR code there, and it blacks out the, the preview. And if we have the composition, we don't see anything about from the slide. Okay, it's being blacked out. As you can see, the thing works in real time, and we can change the layout dynamically. Uh, okay, back here. Let me get out of it. <laughs> it's messing with me. <laughs> okay, no one sec. Okay. okay, and then we have. Uh, one feature set I'm really proud of, I think as a student I would like to have this, is uh, what I call the missing link in lecture capture. Uh, we're missing engaging with the audience somehow and record it. So we have people there and people want to interact with us, we should be looking in ways to work with that. So we have uh, what we call interactive services. So we've designed a full set of services to interact with the audience and cap capture their feedback. So you can do, well in lecture, you can do custom an annotations as a student. You, have, you can annotate the, le the lectures you attend to, you can make notes, uh, create tags through a, a mobile interface. We're, we have already that working and we're looking to do as well a, a, a heavy app. Okay? So you can ask questions to your teacher and you can review your notes in an open, open cast compatible rich me media player. So you log in to, a, to the system, you send your credentials for the university, you use a code that show up, shows up in Gallicaster, and then you are on. You are already being recorded. I mean, not you being recorded, but the data you are, use, you are creating there. And it goes with the flow of the recording, and you can see it in, for instance, we're using Paella for that. So you can review your lecture notes there. And you can as well, if the teacher wants to, he can post answers to your questions and you can re review them online as well. And you can give real-time feedback. You provide real-time feedback to the teacher during the lecture and you can say, okay, I like it, what you, how, how this, this is going, I don't know if I understand you. And the teacher gets feedback on the screen. So he knows in Gallicaster, he knows there are people that have issues and he can deal with it or he even gets a heat map of what went wrong when he was in the class. He can review that later on as well on the lecture notes. Yeah, I mean in the uh, media player. Okay. Another thing we have here, the second section of the interactive services, is we can that we can use Gallicaster Pro as an audience response system. So you can launch a predefined poll or single question and this is, this is here is uh, where the QR code uh, system comes and we are using it again. And the professor uh, may use the professor UI to create the polls and encode them as a QR code. They include the QR code in the presentation. The students connect to the Gallicaster interactive service. And when a poll encoded as QR code is detected by the CA, what happens is that the poll is decoded and pushed to the student mobile interface. So he has this, his mobile interface, his device, and he gets the new poll showing up on his uh, screen. The poll is active for the time that, that's been uh, scheduled in the QR code editing UI. Uh, and when the time is over, result, results are shown in both mobile applications 
the, the one from the student and the professor. Uh, I, I failed to say, um, to mention that the professor has so, uh, as well a new UI where he can control Gallicaster. He can change the PAP, he can hide or show whatever he wants to hide or show. If he decides that QR code is in his thing, he can use that as well. He has the mobile in his hand and he can tweak it. And all the re responses are encoded in one service that already exists in Marhorn. It's called the annotation service and can be reviewed after the lecture is over. Okay, and that's it. I'm gonna pass again the... Thank you, Bruno. Well, as you saw, many, many uh, additional uh, features. But uh, let me wrap up um, the presentation, just in short. Uh, well, we uh, tried to present this uh, smart capture agent uh, idea. Um, we start uh, developing uh, many new features inside the capture agent. We would like to uh, hear your feedback about uh, uh, how these uh, new features can fit in your uh, deployments. Um, of course, this is not a white or black or white uh, decision. Uh, this Gallicaster Pro Smart Capture Agent is fully compatible with Malhorn. You can mix a Smart Capture Agent with traditional uh, light capture agents. Uh, um, in the same for, uh, in the same uh, Malhorn deployment, and uh, well, yeah, Galcaster Pro is an implementation of this uh, smart capture agent uh, idea. We think that Galcaster Pro can help you uh, from a, um, an IT point of view, um, uh, making easier to deploy uh, a Malhorn. Um, Serve based uh, or opencast sorry based service also can uh, be a, a tool uh, for for saving some some money in in your deployments and also can uh, add uh, some uh, good user experience or really new user experience to your professors if you make the decision to try this uh, new uh, audience uh, interaction. Uh, Services. Um, this also this this idea of, of recording interaction together with the um, with the real world uh, uh, recording. We, as far as we know, it's it's really new, and well, this is the the first uh, device uh, providing it. How can you get uh, Gallicaster Pro? Well, we are now uh, including Gallicaster Pro in in all our. Uh, Gallicaster boxes uh, with no additional cost, same cost uh, for the boxes as, uh, as the, well, the previous uh, price tag, we keep it. And also if you would like to try Gallicaster Pro in your own uh, with yourself hardware, we are offering it for a launch price uh, under 400 euros. But if you just want to try it or to test it tomorrow, uh, we want to have outside there a uh, couple of uh, units uh, running. We will be more than happy to show you how it works. And uh, on Friday, we're going to run a uh, one hour uh, workshop <coughs> if you also would like to uh, put your hands on, on, this, uh, on these devices. And that's it. Thank you so much for your attention. And if you have any questions, Uh, so I have a question. So uh, uh, the thing that I've always really liked about Gallicaster is our ability to monkey around with it, and particularly in terms of plugins, we spend all day long writing plugins. Mm -hmm. What's the the model around Gallicaster Pro and you know the use of plugins or the use of modifications? Yeah, the idea is uh, that any plugin um, compatible with Gallicaster community, uh, we start to call in Gallicaster Community Edition to the current uh, Gallicaster software, uh, and this is Gallicaster Pro. So any module compatible with Gallicaster Community Edition uh, should be uh, compatible also with Gallicaster Pro. Yeah, that's good to hear.
Um, thanks. The interactive response system, when you say the interface for the UI or the, sorry, the professor or the student, is that a web interface or are you assuming they would mm. use the Garacaster desktop? Yeah, currently it's a web interface, but that can be seen in a mobile device. It's been deployed by, by Garacaster itself. In, in its current form, Garacaster is a hotspot. It has a Wi-Fi interface, so you connect to it. It's just for show up. So when we're show, showing it up, Calicaster is a hotspot where you can you connect to it and it shows up the application for the student or the professor. It, uh, the application we have will work as well as an APK. You can deploy your own, uh, own Android device or you can deploy it at a C an APA on iOS. But they work both on the, it works on both of them. And then we have to have a bridge between uh, the internet and Calicaster itself. Uh, we're working on it. But what we have right now is that you can connect to that hotspot and you have Garicaster running with the internet services and they show up they show up on your mobile device. Did I answer your question? Or was um, too, too tough? Yeah, thanks. Somehow? Yeah. So yeah. if you if you have I mean you have a campus wireless network already yeah. and then nobody wants a new hotspot showing up. Uh, yeah, I know that. I'm aware yeah. of that. As we tend to <laughs> make me clear that, that it wasn't yeah. an option. Uh, the idea there is uh, to have a bridge somehow that allows you to get to Gallicaster from outside. You know, like a proxy service. So you are connected to the proxy and the proxy connects you to Gallicaster and you, have, you then are connected to it and you can add your, you can add your comments and you get the, communi the, inf the communications from uh, Gallicaster itself right. uh, to your mobile device. Okay. Cause that should way, be do it. In a way what you want is like your device to know where you are and then to connect to. Yeah, no, in a way, what, 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 what we want is to use uh, another software as a proxy. And it's going to just think of a, a web proxy, same thing there. So, so you've created a huge, huge number of new features at Gaucast Pro. Um, have, have, you had any, have you shown these to educators yet and had any uh, feedback? Um, from them? Have, we, have you been working in developing them with um, educators? Yeah. Um, we are, um, our headquarters are inside uh, a campus, so we have uh, very easy access to the um, professors there. And this uh, interaction, interactivity, uh, new features are being um, discussed uh, with them. For instance, a very easy uh, social capacity that they, um, we didn't present it here because it's maybe quite simple, but uh, they are very interested, <laughs> at least in Spain, in, in attendance, uh, how tracking. Can, attendance tracking, yeah, because of the Bologna thing and so on. They are currently working with just uh, signet papers because they have to track the, the, the attendance of the students. Just uh, being able to uh, record uh, the information about the students that are, that are attending to the to the to one specific lecture for them is really important. So with that uh, web application that can be <coughs> run in, in any mobile devices, um, the idea is Gallicaster in, in the touch screen uh, will show at the beginning of the lecture uh, a pin code, a kind of pin code or whatever, uh, and the students just have to to log and, and type that pin code and the attendance will be uh, tracked. Uh, started, starting with that, we start, we then continue exploring all of that interactivity uh, features uh, and we are going towards uh, the uh, real-time uh, note-taking uh, that we think that is, is the, the holy grail somehow of these features that could be the students taking notes in a, a personal space and the system is uh, adding the time codes uh, synchronously with the, with the recording. So when they are watching the recording, they will be able to also to review their notes and they will be able to tag um, just not, not only note taking with, with, uh, as, as a free text uh, field, but uh, also adding uh, tags like uh, review this point or uh, important. And um, as Bruno said, we are now able also to show to the, to the professor uh, how those uh, tags are being added. 
Um, we are now the, the current uh, system is a simplified version of this that I'm, I'm now picturing here. Uh, the students are able to say, I get it, I don't get it, uh, and the professor will have uh, real-time feedback on the Gallicaster screen. Hi, just on that theme, um, can you, this is all during real time of the actual lecture capture, it, does, is this functionality able to, to be added, uh, sorry, is the metadata that the students had able to be added on review after the lecture's been ingested and put on the mm -hmm. server? I'm, I'm trying to work out at which point the information, the data gets added, and it can be done at any time before during lecture or after lecture, is yeah, that right? The, the idea is that all the information is added to the media package inside the capture agent. Uh, right. So if, if, the, if, the, if the lectures happened and then the students, I'm just trying to figure out if you can add comments. Later on. Later, later. on, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You can do that. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Can. yeah. yeah. You're going to be able to do that, but at, uh, using the regular Matterhorn uh, services, if you have them in place. Uh, the real-time note-taking yes. will happen uh, well, during the, the, the lecture, and all of those notes uh, and all of that interaction will be uh, added to the media package uh, as additional uh, metadata layers and will be delivered um, as soon as the lecture ends uh, to, the, to the core. So what, what else happens um, after that it, uh, it, it's, rem it's about the Matterhorn uh, core and, and the Matterhorn functionalities and the Matterhorn player. Okay, so I didn't know it was available on that <coughs> we'll in the future, future version. Is that available now on the, the Matterhorn? Uh, the notes, note the taking? Uh, I think that there is a, an implementation yes, yes, of note taking. That, that down, down to the player, so I think the Enga I don't use the engage player much, but the engage player I believe has got some, the current engage mm -hmm. player has got some um, sort of note taking comments on it, um, but the, um, the new players I think have got a lot more sophisticated sort of student interaction and uh, sort of um, commenting mm -hmm. sort of um, note taking um, facilities available to them. We will be working on that and you will have, uh, we'll work on an interface, you can uh, add your comments Previously, during the class, this heavy, heavy left, lifting up I was talking about, the, you can use that during the class and then you can use it again after that in the cloud. Yeah, I, I really believe that all of these new um, audience engaging uh, features uh, will be uh, very valuable in the future, but now it's kind of a very new uh, um, group of features. What we are really happy about is uh, the, uh, real, the, the ability of, of delivering uh, almost ready to publish uh, package in, in real time, doing all the uh, media processing and, and uh, slide detection and so on. And this, this third set of, of features is something that we are keen to explore with, with, uh, with you, as we are doing with our professors in, in, in our campus in, in Spain. Uh, but something, yeah, cutting edge uh, thing that we would like to, to explore together. Um.